leveling in the Mid-South, and so you can, you can move a lot of soil. Uh, tillage practices can help to move it some. But uh, in a lot of these soils that are really sandy, not all the fields are uniform as far as the sand goes. There's pockets that are loamy sand or sandy loam. Um, and those areas will be the most problematic. And then it's kind of spread out from those based on uh, equipment, tillage, disking, that'll move it kind of down the road. But based on our cropping system, um, it's probably there in a very small population density and over time you start to see that increase. It doesn't mean that every field has it, but uh, every county that is producing soybeans would have southern root knot nematode. But it's, it's highly concentrated in most of the southern states given the history of cotton production. The cotton belt is where we really associate the, the highest density and uh, distribution of the southern root knot nematode. So a lot of those soils in the northern uh, soybean growing areas are really probably too cold for that to be uh, a major issue, but that's why we see it concentrated in the south. It can survive short distances of flooding, but not long. Flooding rice will actually kill it, but of course the flood is staying on the rice for two and three months. So that's long enough to drown them out. It doesn't mean that all the nematodes in that field are gone. Um, so, but it tends to prefer deep sandy soils. Um, it needs that to be able to move through the soil. Um, and it likes a little bit warmer temperatures, but it has a huge host range. So that makes it more problematic in the south because almost every crop we grow is a host to the southern root knot nematode. So within a, uh, a, a year long cropping system, you could have five or six cycles, maybe more, um, if that plant stays alive. And so uh, that, that problem increases exponentially. So at that feeding site, um, these giant cells that the female's feeding on is robbing uh, water nutrients from the plant. Also at that exact feeding site, um, the, the cells are enlarging around her, which causes the characteristic uh, knots or galls that we associate with the, the root knot nematode. And so each one of those galls is, is kind of like a, a large rock in the middle of a small stream. It's kind of plugging it up and, and reducing that water uptake. Economically, it's, it's a night and day difference uh, from, from bushels and yield loss. So even when you're, uh, you're losing only 20% uh, at $9 a bushel, that's a huge impact for an entire farm. Think of that if you could recover that cost. Part of my goal, part of the goal of the coalition is to get farmers to know what problems they have and to start utilizing uh, host plant resistance. And, and that's exactly what we're trying to do here because I think it's money that's being left on the table if they're not utilizing it.